Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we're going to be doing our Pollock style painting. Thank you again for uh, 2,750 subscribers, appreciate it. Um, and I wanted to honor that, you know, thing that I said, I forget what the promise, I guess. Anyway, uh, where I said that I would do a Pollock style painting at 2,750. So um, once I start painting the painting, you won't be able to hear me. I'll probably have to put music over it. And the reason is, is because... Uh, if I don't use a mic, then you can't hear me. And if I do use a mic, any little bit of wind or current or anything just kind of blows over the mic and makes it really loud and annoying. So um, I'm going to talk about what I'm using today beforehand, and then you'll just kind of see it uh, as I actually paint the painting. So we'll talk about the paints real quick. We'll talk about the canvas, and we'll talk about uh, the materials. So I already have a canvas. I'm going to show you guys real quick over there. I have a canvas that I'm going to be painting over. It has a painting on it that I liked when I first did it, and then after a while I kind of hated it. Uh, so, you know, I was like, you know what, screw it, we'll just kind of paint over it. Um, so, we're going to paint the background uh, this purple and gray. So this is like a light gray, um, and then we have kind of a purple here. We're going to be using those for the background. Um, and this painting is kind of inspired by Jackson Pollock's uh, Full Fathom 5, um, which had kind of purple, turquoise, silver, black, and white. And so we're going to try to mimic some of that with some of these colors that we have today. So we're going to do the background this purple and then this light gray. And then for the actual Pollock, uh, like the paint that we're going to throw on it, uh, we've got silver, white, black, and turquoise here. Um, next, let's talk about kind of the materials we'll be using. We're going to use a brush to actually do the background. Kind of makes sense, right? Um, but for the tools that we'll be using to actually have to create our splatter, um, we're going to be using a rubber spatula, a plastic spoon, and then the paint sticks that we'll be using to paint to, to do the actual stirring. Um, so let's talk about the effects that these create real quick. Um, I found that these rubber spatulas, um, the thin ones and the bigger ones, they make very clean lines. So you can use this to just kind of do like the cursive writing almost. They make very clean lines. Um, the spoons actually kind of give you the more erratic lines because you generally kind of snap the spoon and it gives you a little bit of a spray. So this one you can kind of get the more erratic lines. And then the paint stick is kind of in between. So you can use it to just kind of drizzle or you can snap the stick because it has, because it's kind of lying, it gives you a little bit of leverage so you can kind of snap it and get, you know, these really dense like pockets of paint with these kind of erratic lines going off. So that's why I like using the paint sticks. Um, but that's pretty much it. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these paints mixed. And then once they're mixed, I'm gonna set them over to the side and we will start painting. Okay, so we've got our paints mixed and we're pretty much ready to go. But before I, I, I head over to the canvas and we start the painting, I wanted to talk about the effects of temperature on paint. So if you're new to painting, this applies to, I've only used acrylic paint and gloss enamel really, um, so it affects both of them. Uh, but essentially the heat, so I live in Arizona in the US, it's very hot here. Um, even right now we're in the middle of summer, so it's, you know, the temperatures are over 100 degrees. Um, the effects that it has on the paint is when you're storing the paint, it obviously gets very warm. Ideally, it would be best to keep it in a temperature controlled environment or somewhere in the house so it doesn't affect it. However, I have a large family, uh, so there's not really anywhere else for me to put the paint. So uh, it causes the paint to be very warm and very 
like very runny basically because it's hot it spreads out well this also affects the acrylic paint the same way just last night i was trying to paint and the paint was warm so it was coming out very smooth very soft it didn't have a lot of body to it and then obviously in the cold it's kind of the opposite um, it's very thick very hard to turn and it doesn't want to you know mix very well um, it does cause it to dry faster. So as I'm doing these Pollock style paintings, it's kind of an advantage because it dries faster, but it also makes it more challenging um, because it's drying faster. So you have to move faster. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're trying to do, uh, what the effect is that you're going for and stuff like that. So ideally what I would suggest is if you can keep your paint in a temperature controlled environment, do that but if you have to keep them say in a shed or in your garage or you know in storage or something where it might get warm or those temperatures are going to fluctuate just think about that that it is going to affect how those paints kind of work when you go to use them and also i found that having them in the garage uh, a bottle of acrylic paint which might usually last like a couple of years if it was just kind of left alone um, dries up very very fast like in under a year um, being in my garage once it's open so again just kind of things to think about but that's it I just wanted to kind of throw that out there and now we'll go ahead and uh, head over to our canvas and start painting So we're gonna call it good. Excuse me. Draw overall, I I kind of like it. Let's see, we got a lot of decent color dispersion. I like the purple and gray background. The turquoise is nice. It adds kind of a nice. Uh, like a little bit of contrast but it's a little subtle it's not like in your face sorry for the wind but that is the final piece overall pretty happy with it my black paint is pretty thin i guess because it is creating a lot of like splatter and stuff over here well all over but 
Um, yeah, the paint must have been kind of thin because it was creating a lot of splatter. More than I was trying to create, I should say. Um, but you can see a lot of the, the white, um, you know, like I was saying, you know, with the snaps, is creating a lot of these dynamic lines here. Um, overall, I think it was a success. So that's it for the painting. I appreciate you guys watching and uh, thank you for your support. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye guys.